All right, uh, we're back for another planning meeting for the Loves the Answer Day, which is taking place September 17th. It's our third annual. I'm AJ Ali, and uh, let's see, today is, uh, is July 23rd. Mm -hmm. So Barbara, Trey, Dina, welcome. Thank and you. Welcome to everybody else who is uh, gonna tune in later to see this. Uh, so we keep these short, uh, under an hour. We'll be done uh, in probably 30 or 45 minutes today. Um, quick updates. Um, I wanna start out with just naming off some of the places that have confirmed that they're gonna participate so far. And there, there, there are probably at this point 15 places, um, but I've only got four for sure. And uh, the others are, they're like, they're like 99%. I just don't wanna put their names down until I get that one extra 1%. Um, so I'm, we're, we're, we're five shy of where we want it to be by this time, but we'll make that up. Um, so Baltimore, Maryland, um, there's a really cool development going up uh, by Weller Development and um, uh, Kevin Plank's company. He owns Under Armour and um, a couple other groups. And it's a, it's a several hundred million dollar uh, uh, community basically that they're building. And they have committed to putting a love garden there. And so that'll, that'll probably come in uh, in 2022. But, um, uh, and that, that one has the potential to actually be one of our flagship locations because we're looking at putting a big training center in there as well, um, which will be really cool. And uh, they have committed to uh, using Port Covington as a location for creating uh, one of the murals and it may wind up being a, a temporary location that will then move to the garden once that opens up. But um, we're excited about that because um, we got strong ties to the Baltimore area. Um, Bucks County, Pennsylvania, where Barbara is. Um, Barbara and uh, Matt Weintrobe. I talked to uh, Matt yesterday, the DA. He said, absolutely, 100%, we're gonna find a spot. So Barbara, I know you and Matt have talked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you went right to the top. I was I was going to like the police chiefs and the community groups. And so when I heard from Matt, it was like, oh my gosh, AJ. <laughs> I always think of him as just going out and getting the bad guy. So I didn't I didn't want to, you know, bother him with that. So I'm glad you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was excited. He was excited about it. And uh, you know, you know, Matt. Matt's, Matt's down for anything good and, and positive and uplifting in the community. Yeah. So really, really love him. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so he said he'll, he'll help make it happen. So that's, that's cool. And I know you're working hard in, Bar in Bucks County, Barbara. Um, mm -hmm. So I appreciate mm -hmm. you so much. Mm -hmm. um, Ypsilanti, Michigan, um, the, the mayor is on it there and uh, she'll make sure that uh, that things happen there. She's been talking about the possibility of a street mural, which would be cool. Um, I think they, they have to get some uh, work through a lot of red tape to get the approvals done on, on that because there's a lot of moving parts there. But if it's not uh, a street mural, then I'm sure they'll find another uh, great location. And of course, we've been doing a tremendous amount of work in Ypsilanti and Trey's been uh, really busy with some of that stuff. Um, North Carolina, um, we've got two places uh, that have uh, committed. And one of them is um, Mecklenburg County, the sheriff there in Charlotte. Um, he said he's got a 50 yard wide wall in the, in the jail. And it's like 12 feet high by 50 yards wide. So that's 150 feet wide. And he wants to create a space where, um, where people can come and visit their family members who are incarcerated and they mm -hmm. and he wants to create a, a space that's that's um family friendly that is um as trey would say a, a rehumanization space a place where people can come and i shared with him how important that was uh to me because my father spent time in prison my brother spent time in prison um and when i and when i was a little kid this was when i was a little kid I would go and I was terrified. Um, and 
it, it was just a horrible experience every single time. And so to hear a sheriff say that he wants to create spaces that are gonna make build into families and make them feel loved and respected is just mind boggling. Really, hey, really positive. AJ, can I say some one quick thing? I know you want to keep the meeting short, but um, yeah, there's an exercise, an activity that I've always done, which um, is ask people to cross the line if, and if the sentence resonates with you, then you're crossing the line. And every time, no matter what group I've worked with over the years, one of the one of the sentences is, if you have a friend or family member um, incarcerated and almost everyone crosses that line. And so, you know, it really does impact far, and people just don't talk about it, but it impacts far more families than we realize. You're absolutely right. Yeah, and you know, I, I posted something on LinkedIn um, yesterday, maybe Facebook as well, about um, the measure of a society and, and, how, and how we treat those who are, you know, most vulnerable. And, um, you know, people in poverty, um, people who are um, mentally ill, mm -hmm. uh, people who are incarcerated, right? And the measure of a society is not how much money we make or how strong our military is. It's how we treat those who are most vulnerable. And we're failing in that as a, as a nation. And yeah, you're right, Barbara, almost, Almost every family has a connection to someone who's either incarcerated or on probation or parole. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we have to find a way to start showing more love to, uh, you know, to people who are incarcerated. Um, you know, the fact that someone can have, you know, basically all their teeth decaying and falling out and they can't even eat uh, because they don't get any, any dental, dental care is just, um, you know, it's just not right. Well, that's why right. I push restorative justice practices because we could be preventing a, a good number of future crimes by doing healing work in advance. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So that's, you know, that's a big direction for us. And that's, um, you know, something that um, I'm excited about. And Gary McFadden, by the way, is the sheriff in, in Mecklenburg County. Um, great guy. I, I've recently connected with him and he's been on one of our Zooms and just really committed to, you know, to doing the right thing. And so, um, you know, touching base with him and then Bobby Kimbrough in Forsyth County, also in North Carolina, he's going to do uh, something there. Mm -hmm. And in, in both cases, we're going to try to include um, people who are incarcerated and, mm -hmm. and family members, if, if possible. Um, along with other members of the community, you know, to, uh, to, to paint these murals and, um, you know, just really create some special places. Susan, good to have you here. Good to see you. Hi, Susan. Lois, Mayor Lois, good to see Hi, you. Lois. Hello, everybody. I'm <laughs> not showing my face because I'm eating. I had a call that came, started at 10 and didn't end until 1. Oh so I'm so, I'm so I'm eating breakfast, lunch, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm here. I'm listening. You're glad to have you here. Glad to have you here. Good um, to be here. Yeah. Good to see everybody. Hi. Yes. <laughs> so um, we were just sharing a little bit about um, the places that have confirmed so far. And we've got, uh, so I listed places, four places, but it's actually five locations, just four different states. And, uh, and then there's, there's, there's a total of about 15 that, um, that I know are coming in so far. I just didn't list them because they're like at the 99% certain mark. Um, but we're, we're five short of where we want to be. I'm hoping, fingers crossed, knock on wood that we'll get to that 20 mark by the end of the day because I'm going to be making calls throughout the day and uh, hopefully getting more commitments. So um, yeah, we'll keep working on that. Um, Dina, do you, um, so so since you're, this is your first time on this, um, can, can you share a little bit about yourself? 
Sure. This is my second time. The first time I was on, I had the RIT background and we started talking oh, about RIT. But yes. Yeah, yeah, so, that's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> oh, that's okay. So yes, I'm in Rochester, New York. I'm the director of care and support at the Alzheimer's Association, but I also started my own nonprofit organization called um, 501c3 called Monroe County Family Coalition. And what it does is really looking towards um, building um, gaps and bridges between our government bodies and local town officials and key stakeholders to help our youth and youth at risk and our families. Um, we know through the aftermath of George Floyd, it brought out a, a lot to the light that we've already known, but it was even more. So I felt instead of us um, being angry with one side, how can we redirect, retrain, and, and create opportunities for all? So the end goal is really to have a space where folks can get soft skills, um, where there'll be partnerships with our police department, with our towns, getting our cities getting more um, collaborative. And one thing about Rochester is we're resource rich, really resource rich, but people don't talk to each other. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's not about recreating the, the will, but how can we bridge the gaps together and collaborate? So if you're doing something that I may not have the skills for, not saying I'm gonna create another position, but how can I work with you so it can help advance your mission as well as my vision and mission. So those are some things that I'm doing in Rochester, but I, I met AJ as being a part of the National Association of African-Americans and Human Resource. I sit on the board as the um, our Rochester region as a co-chair of membership VP. So um, it was excited to learn about Walking While Black, to watch the documentary and to even look to work with our police department to see how we can move those needles and kind of um, for some of the perception bias on both sides, but also to build those relationships. We know we need our police, um, at, you know, but we also need to know where the training begins and we also need the community to be able to stand together and not be separated. So those are some of my, my vision and mission and, and why I'm thankful being here. And I know I did connect Trey with RIT and that was a great meeting. I'm so sorry I had to leave through some of it, but I'm hoping that that's one college who has a STEP program. So their science and technology reentry program that they'll be able to get involved with some of their students to create a mural for this project. That's Sorry, awesome. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. That is really, really awesome. Thanks. Um, so I, I know, uh, you know, your area, Dina, is one of those that we're, we're at the 99% mark. I just want to be able to check that, check that box off, you know, at the end of the day as well to say that uh, we're, we're, we're good there too. Um, so we'll, um, you know, we, of course, Monroe County Sheriff's Office has the uh, license there and, and within AAA HR working closely with him, uh, I'm, I'm sure we'll have a, a mural done there as well, correct? Well, I want to. I would <laughs> love this to happen. Um, needs it. We need it right now. Our city needs healing. It's a lot of gun violence. It's, it's just a lot going on for it to be small Rochester. So... Barbara. Oh, you're on mute. Yeah, Barbara. Dana, thank you for that inspiring um, update. That's I'm so happy to hear that. Um, so one of the questions that, um, and you may be going over this, so um, you can tell me to hold on to this thought, but ideas for murals, have you discussed that? Uh, with various groups, yeah, yeah. So let's go over that. That's a good time to go over that. Um, and 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 this it fits well within the the, the um, second section of reviewing the general activities. Um, so on that day, there will be murals painted in different cities all over the world. Our goal is one in every state, one in every U.S. territory, and at least one on every continent. Um, including Antarctica. I always have to throw that in. <laughs> That's the most unlikely indoors, of course. Um, so as far as the ideas for the designs of the murals, we actually had uh, Todd Goodman, our uh, artist in residence uh, on the other day. And, um, you know, he was uh, sharing some ideas and we're going we're gonna to keep it simple. We're going to have um, 
at the at the center of every mural, expect to see the "Love Is the Answer" logo. Um, well, you all know what the logo looks like. So, well, well, here, just for for those who may be watching later, this is my old beat up copy of my book. So that's the "Love Is the Answer" logo, and at the center of every mural, you can count on seeing that. Okay, and um, so we were we're gonna we're gonna put the logo on the well the logo is on the website and what we're going to do is add a stencil version of that so that people can just print it out and then use a um, you know print it out on a big piece of paper and um, use that as a stencil to guide them and then all around it it's just expressions of what love looks like in that community um, so really you know leaving it to everyone to to decide what does it look like? And what I'm hoping is that we can get people um, painting um, things that, uh, you know, may have happened in, in the community, like, um, you know, Chief Melvin Russell, who's on our team, all the many times that he would, uh, you know, go and, you know, have a meal on somebody's porch, you know, in the community, he just, you know, you know, walk up and and because he knew people, so he'd stop at their houses and he'd sit and talk with them and have a glass of iced tea or even a roast beef sandwich or something. And and so maybe that's you know part of the cor on the corner of the Baltimore mural of of Chief Mel with a couple of you know community members, you know, having a meal on a porch. Um, so whatever it looks like in in each community, it's going to be different. And hopefully there'll be five or ten or fifteen different things that are depicted in each mural of, of things that, that have happened, you know, people putting love into action. And then, uh, you know, some hopeful stuff. What do we want the, the picture to look like a year from now, five years from now, right? Um, so that's it, you know, just really giving people freedom to express themselves uh, and, and, and make it their own. So okay, you know, I'm, I'm sure people, some, you know, iconic imagery of their city in each one, and, you know, stuff like that. So, yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, also during, uh, you know, during the day while we're talking about that, um, we're encouraging people to come out with um, food and beverages and other refreshments and uh, wellness things like seated massage and spoken word and music and just make it fun. Just make it a little mini uh, festival, uh, you know, for the day. Um, in places that have a love garden, uh, we have one love garden up and running now. And I think there's gonna be a, a few more coming online this summer. I'm hoping that murals can be uh, painted in those gardens. And, and since it's gonna be, you know, September, good time for kind of a harvest festival atmosphere, you know, hopefully people will be leaving with bags of food as well that they can take home organic fruits and vegetables that have been grown in the garden um yeah yeah so you know just an expression of life and love in, in all forms and uh and importantly um we're also going to be asking people to take photos and videos of what's going on that day all those expressions and uh and then we're going to spend a few months from september until february uh, putting those images together in the form of a music video that will go with the Love is the Answer theme song that we'll be unveiling on Valentine's Day 2022. And Trey, maybe that's a, that's a you know, we talked about maybe working with music in common to get some things uh, done uh, with that as well. That'd be good. Definitely. Yeah. Um, in the notes, uh, and if you are looking at this later, you won't see the notes, but you'll see it in the body of where the, the video is. Um, there, there's a section on where you can learn more about the day, and there's a link there. So there's, um, that's loveistheanswermovement.com, and then backslash Lita hyphen day. It's in the, it'll be in the notes. You can also sign up if you're watching this uh, on Facebook. Uh, later, you can sign up to participate. In, the, in, in a committee in your area, there's gonna be a link uh, on our website for that. And let me copy and paste these notes again, because uh, I, I don't think all of you have access to them. Bear with me, sorry. 
Let's see. Okay, I just posted the second set of notes out of three. Um, number five, register for the weekly Zoom planning meetings, and you can do that uh, on the link in the notes below this video. And then we need volunteers. Um, so th something to think about if you're wherever you are uh, in your area, we need volunteers, we need sponsors, we need media partners, we need art schools and art classes to participate, start thinking about getting some people involved. We need um, coffee shops and office buildings and malls and other private spaces to say, hey, paint a mural on this wall. You know, paint the love is the answer mural on my wall. Let's beautify this space. We need mayors and, and city managers and county executives to say, hey, you know, we got a, we got a space over here on this such and such street. Um, let's beautify that. Let's put a love is the answer mural there. Uh, we're also going to ask for mayors and county execs and others to uh, deem love is the, uh, September 17th as love is the answer day by proclamation. Um, so if you're watching this, think about your, your uh, local leaders and how they might be able to do that. And those can be uh, read on the Zoom when we go around the different cities uh, for people to show off their work on that day, late in that day, those proclamations could be read. Um, and then uh, the last thing on the agenda, and then we'll just open it up, um, is that uh, we wanted 20 teams committed by today. I think we can still get there. We've got five more to go. Um, I'll be making calls throughout the day and I'll let y'all know. Um, I'll probably post that uh, tomorrow, see where we are. And then we want 40 teams posted, uh, committed, by August 6, which is two weeks from now. So, How many um, teams? Uh, 40 by August 6, so doubling it. And we got a lot in the pipeline, so they're going to be coming, coming in, and I think we can get there. And then we want all the locations uh, committed by um, uh, 60 locations committed by August 13th and all locations confirmed and permitted in the case where there's permits needed by the 27th of uh, August. Is Yaden participating? Um, yeah, they're, uh, they're, they're in that 99% um, group. Um, I just have to confirm with Chachi, but that should be, that should be a go. And uh, he planned to do one at the garden mm -hmm. that uh, he opened up, yeah. <laughs> Yep. So uh, yeah, state-wise, we've got um, we've got New York, Pennsylvania, um, Maryland, Michigan, and North Carolina uh, locked in, and and we'll be adding you know more and more states. All right, open discussion. Anything and everything. All good. Okay, if we're good, we can end early. AJ, I'm curious to see about how, when it comes to having the communities be creative and how they create their murals, I'm wondering what are the things that we really would like to be the non-negotiables and that we want to have in the mirrors and the things that can be more flexible. I asked this because when I did have a conversation with um, Ashley from the Rochester Institute of Technology, um, and they, we talked about the idea of them creating the mural. They talked about how, although it would be difficult for them to get an actual mural um, at let's say the Institute, the idea of having students kind of make their own, let's say, pictures, their own paintings of what love can look like. And then let's say putting all of those paintings like together in like a meaningful exhibit and exhibition. And then, you know, that can be maybe shown at the Institute for a time being. And then after that, all the students taking those paintings home with them. That was an idea that they thought could be more feasible. So I'm curious to know, like, you know, 
as folks may need to be creative at a point when it comes to producing these murals? What are the things that we definitely want all states to do? And what are things we're yeah. going to be a little more flexible with? It? That's a great question, Trey. Um, I, I'm letting uh, Harvey in to the meeting. So, um, so we want, uh, hi, Harvey. Good to see you, brother. Um, we want these to be uh, permanent. Um, so it's, it's not a non-negotiable, but it is a really, really strong preference. Um, we, we don't want temporary displays because we want people to go past that place six months later, a year later, and remember that, that day that the community came together to create a, a, a beautiful space, um, a rehumanization space, as you say, Trey. Um, so we want there to, you know, if you if you have a group doing that and, and putting a, dis, a, a display up and then taking it down, you've created a moment. Um, and that moment can be really meaningful and good, but we're looking for more long lasting things. We want a moment to build into a movement. Um, so if at all possible, we want permanent displays. And, you know, even in the case of Port Covington uh, in Baltimore, uh, we'll, we'll likely have the mural painted in a temporary spot but it's going to be moved to another location on that property uh, once the garden goes in. Um, but so in a sense, it's, it's temporary and permanent, right? So if, if there's a case of, uh, you know, like a group that wants to do, uh, have people doing paintings and putting them up, um, and if they want to move it to another location, uh, cool. But the other, the other part of it is that there's an exercise that takes place when, when, when there's a group of people painting a mural as opposed to individuals making their own little paintings and putting them all together like a quilt. Um, there's not as much of a shared experience as there is when you prepare one piece and you've had a part of that. And that's, uh, that's the symbolism that we're really striving for is that um, it takes all of us uh, to come together as one body to, to create something truly beautiful. Um, you know, so we're individuals uh, um, contributing to the whole. Yeah. I'm thinking maybe they can collaborate with like a coffee shop or something off campus with their students and make that an activity in that way, because the campus may not allow that but off campus, if you partner with a coffee shop, because there's several, or you partner in one of our um, underserved communities where there's time for healing, that may work. So maybe I can um, try to talk with them um, to see if that's something they could do. That's a great idea. That'd be awesome. Dina, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that would be really wonderful. Um, so the, 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 the non-negotiables uh, are simple. Um, you know, we are looking for permanent spaces. Um, we're looking for the Love is the Answer logo at the center of the uh, mural. And then we're looking for, um, we'll have a, a uh, everyone put the hashtag uh, there, try love now. Um, so that'll be on everything as well. Yeah. Yeah, love is the answer movement. We use that sometimes too, but that's like really long, you know? So um, try love now, we've been using that also. And um, that's actually the name of the theme song uh, that's, that's uh, being produced also. Cause there's too many love is the answer songs already. <laughs> There's like 10 of them out there that are there and they're all really great. I just don't want to add one more uh, to the mix, but yeah. All right. Any other, uh, any other thoughts? 
Um, Harvey, I don't know if you heard, but we have, um, we've confirmed uh, Baltimore, Maryland, Bucks County, Pennsylvania, Ypsilanti, Michigan, uh, two places in North Carolina, uh, Forsyth County and Mecklenburg County. Um, we're pretty much there at, at Monroe County. Um, uh, and then there's, there's like, there's like 10 or 11 places that had no about 10 places that are 99%. They're just not hundred percent. And I just need to get that 1% done. So we're trying to get five more by the end of the day so we can reach our, our 20 goal um, for this date. And uh, I think we'll get there. And uh, Nat Alston is joining us now. Hey, Nat, good to see you. You're on mute, buddy. Sorry, I'm late. I've been, this is my, would you believe, my fifth Zoom meeting already today. So, <laughs> and I got three more to go. <laughs> oh, man. So wow. I'm going to be Zoomed out. I got to break at two and then two, four, and six tonight. So, hey. Wow. And I started at 8 a.m. this morning. <laughs> Man. Matt, that's you're topping my number in a day. Yeah, so forgive me. I got to scramble. That's why you saw the different backgrounds. I'm switching back and forth now, so forgive me. <laughs> that's all right. Good to have you here. I hope you're getting up and taking some walks in between Zooms, man. I am. I have to now. Yeah, <laughs> After, that's it. I really do. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So um, we're we're we're, we're close to wrapping up. Um, okay. I'm gonna. I'm going to refresh the uh, the notes, uh, some of the notes, so that everyone can see them. So uh, bear with me while I do that. I'll just take a second to do that. Anybody got any other uh, questions or comments while I'm doing that? OK. I've got two more sections to copy and paste in. Super. And these will also um, these will also be on our social media later. Okay. One more, if I can find it. Here we go. Okay. All right. Uh, oh, did I do that? Did I did I put the wrong thing in there? Oh yeah, I put the <laughs> I put one in there twice. Sorry about that. Let me go back and. In technology, there we go. Okay, there we go. All the notes are there. So, um, yeah, we if you know anyone in any state that's not listed here, um, we're doing the push to get uh, every state lined up. Got some feelers out to uh, about a dozen countries as well. Um, so I, I know we're gonna, we're gonna reach that uh, all continent goal probably easier than the um, 50 state goal, but I, I wanna make sure we, we accomplish both. Yeah. All right. Um, if there's no other questions or comments, we can end early. Oh, Susan put in there. Um, who do we confirm with in Bucks? Um, so Matt Weintraub and Barbara talked yesterday. I talked with Matt as well. Uh, so he he's guaranteed us that he's going to find a spot for the mural in Bucks. Yeah, he's waiting to hear back from Diane. Um, Diane Marseglia, the county commissioner, has committed one of two buildings. Um, so we that's in the pipeline. We just have to wait and see which location, and then that'll determine which community members we've got to get involved and all that. So we're, um, yeah, we, we, we may wind up having a couple in, in Pennsylvania, maybe two or three, maybe two or three in Michigan. Um, 
So, and I'm, I'm heading, Jane and I are heading to uh, Montana um, to visit with some very close friends that we haven't seen in years. And uh, they're, they're vaccinated and they have a guest house. So all mm. the criteria have been met for us to have a safe trip to go visit with some folks. Um, what part, what so part of Montana? They're in, um, gosh, let me, let me look at, you know, my memory, Nat, I, I can never remember. Um, oh, no, just, just claim it. Hey, you suffer from Sometimer's disease. That's okay. <laughs> that we're, I we're do. Good. We're good. <laughs> They're in Livingston, Livingston, okay. Montana. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to, I'm going to uh, get, uh, tap them for support as well to try to put together a team of people there. We've got people in Colorado that uh, I'm sure, 100% sure they're gonna do something as well, so. Yeah, and also try um, Helena, if that's the capital, but they, uh, they have the uniqueness of having their first uh, African-American mayor in Helena. Oh, okay, wow. So if they wanna reach out there, um, you know, I. As I said, that this is part of those those states. I only have two more states to visit. You you beat me with all fifty. I've just got North Dakota and Alaska, but uh, Montana, Billings, Bozeman, Helena, uh, been all through that part of that. So um, and uh, Helena, yeah, has the distinction now having their first African American mayor in there in Helena. That's cool. Yeah, and that's the, that's the capital, but also the city mayor is that. So if they have any connections, and let's face it, Montana may be a big state, but population-wise, <clears throat> I don't even think it has a million people yet, really, but. They're definitely spread out. Maybe yeah, they're uh, spread out. They're hard to now, count because they're always out hunting. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> so they may, have, they may have a connection there at Helena, I don't know. Okay. Well, Nat, maybe you and Lois and I can talk with the mayor of Helena. Yeah. 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 I'll pull it up on there when you say Montana. Yeah. Big Sky, Montana. Yeah. It is so beautiful there. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. It is. It is. Yep. Uh, Nat, there is a TV show that I've been watching some called Big Sky. Yep. Yeah, big sky it Montana. Is in Montana, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, I think, well, one of the stars is a black woman, a black woman or a white woman together. But uh, it's it's interesting in that <laughs> this is the only black person I've seen in the whole <laughs> whole state as they show the state. Trey, you're shaking your head like you've been watching it too, or you've seen it at least. Yes, I've seen a couple of episodes. So I, once you said the name, I was like, I know exactly what she's talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have to check that out. Do it's uh, it's you know, it's it's I, I'm waving my hands and stuff, and I forgot y'all can't see me. <laughs> it's a it's a cute little it's a night nice, i won't say cute but it's a good little uh <clears throat> crime drama type thing show okay isn't that what Very you say uh, trey crime yeah. drama yes it is it's like it's a new one of the crime police shows it's another one only this yeah. one's in big sky montana and yeah one of the main officers is a black woman and it's pretty much the only person of color in the whole spot. Mm, right. AJ, if you don't mind, very quickly, excuse me for the interruption. If you let me share your, my screen, I'll sh show you something. Okay, let me uh, set you up for that. Yeah, just real quick. Hey, co host. Okay, there you go. Okay. Uh, let's see, where am I wanting to go? Hold on one second. I, let me pull it up one more okay. time. Let me close all these up and then I'll show you uh, what I'm talking about. Okay. And okay, and I can go, go to, let me do this. Uh, let me 
Okay, let me share screen and then, okay. That's your mayor. Okay. That is your, that's, that's the mayor of Helena, Montana. Oh, you know what, and, I've, I've heard of him. he's from Liberia. Yeah, really? I remember his story. Yep. Oh, wow. <clears throat> <laughs> so he was born, he's 57, and would you believe he's born in Monrovia, Liberia? Wow. Wow. That's pretty cool. And he's the mayor of Helena, Montana. So, uh, hey, trust me, he's going to be the story of, of a lot of <laughs> issues up there. But thought I'd just share that with you. That's great. But that's that's him. Yeah. Okay. Him. Uh, he was told to go back to Africa. Yeah. Instead, he may go to the U.S. Senate. Yeah. Yeah. Just, cool. Stuff. Yeah. He went back to Africa, Montana. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Nat. You're yeah, welcome, we'll sir. Have, let's definitely try to get him him on board. Yeah. Just a little bit of little bit of information out there, you know. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm gonna wrap up the uh, formal part of this. If you're watching this later, uh, we need we need you to uh, help us get a mural in your state uh, or in your country if you're not in the United States. Uh, if you're in a U.S. territory, we're doing Love Is the Answer Day, September 17th, and uh, the goal is to have murals all over the world depicting love in action. Um, not only is it going to be cool to get out with a handful of people from your community to uh, create something special, but you're going to be part of something that's, you know, going to be a global event, people doing something uh, in unison, in, in a spirit of love uh, that will have lasting impact uh, all over the world. So make history with us, join us, be part of this day. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and okay. stop the recording and then we'll uh, we'll wrap up. Okay, uh, AJ, could you and Nat and I talk?